G'day Reefers and welcome to another episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Adam the Cameraman and this is my new water box. We've been working away in the past couple of episodes to get it established and in my office and ready to go. Now, the last time we spoke I left you with needing to put salt in since I've just filled it up. I've actually done that over the past couple of days. I've acquired the new salt and I'll show you that in a second. You can notice that there's a new light on there. This is a Kessel A360. I've just pulled off another tank for the meantime just to see aesthetics. I may not stick with this lighting in the future, but we'll see. I might come up with a new plan. If you want to chuck some suggestions in the comments below on what you think would be suitable for this size tank, uh, please do so. Now, there's a bunch of extra little treats that I've been grabbing along the way as the weeks have been passing just to build up the tank and get it to a point uh, where it can be a bit more automated and have all of the requirements we need for a little tank like this. So let's get stuck into having a look at those and we'll set up some new bits and pieces that we've got. Now I mentioned that I'd done the salt since we'd last spoken, and that I did. I did it with Accuracy. This is from Two Little Fishies. I did appreciate all the feedback on the salt types you gave me, guys. I did end up going this way. I like the look of it. I like the small batch uh, capability of it in that you just fill up a particular volume to match a specific gravity and dump the whole bag in and you're done. Um, I had no dramas with that. It's The tank's already and up at 1.026. So I'm happy with where the salt's at. So let's look at the other items that is going to make this tank run a little bit better. Now, the next important aspect of this tank is the aquascape. I was able to acquire some stacks. Again, another two little fishies product. I just really like the way that we can keep a low profile for this style of aquascape in that I'm only working with just over a foot in height. So I do need to think, keep things a little bit lower and keep it in mind that due to the fact I can't go so high, I'm going to need aquascaping that can spread out and give more surface area. And Stax really does a great job of this because you can connect them all together flat but then splay them out in a variety of ways that suit filling that surface area space. I've also got some acrylic rod. I don't know if I'm even going to need to use it because I've got my two box of stacks and I also have very two little fishies themed at the moment, some aqua stick. And the aqua stick will uh, act as a great binder. The epoxy is perfect for rock like this. And what I'm going to use it mainly to do is just to make sure that the stack is going to adhere to itself and not topple over. Um, so let's get stuck into some aquascaping. So here we have the surface we're going to start aquascaping on. Not only will it protect the floor, but it's actually the lid of the box. So the space within these borders of the flaps is going to replicate what I'm working with in the tank size. So it'll be a great surface to work on. So let's get some of the stacks pieces out and start building some spires. I got two boxes in total, one little box and one big box. The little box I was thinking of using for just feet, for minimal contact area, but I may end up using them how they were originally intended and just throw them into the mix of all the big stuff. We'll see how we go. So it's good to see there's some that are actually what I'd call cap pieces. Most of them have been cut directly across the center of a fair bit of uh, area or girth of the actual rock itself, which doesn't lend itself to having many tops that I could put on and look um, not unnatural because the smooth surface looks unnatural. So this is a nice cap part that I like that though there is a little bit of a flat cut here and here, it's barely noticeable. So it'll be great to put these on top of the spires at the end. big bit here. Another part that could maybe pass for a cap part with the big gouge in the top here doesn't look super unnatural. Okay so all the pieces are out. Uh, it looks like there's a pretty good variety here. Um, essentially I'm just going to play with them, stack them into different heights, different types, shapes and see what I like. If I like something I'll leave it or slide it to the side 
And then what I'll do is I'll epoxy that in solid so it's not going to fall or any of that sort of stuff. And then it'll be ready to be put in the tank. Uh, we might have to bust out the epoxy for this. I'm trying to counterweight the top with the large piece that I've put out to the side here. Part of doing that will be binding some of the rock. I think it's time to mix up some epoxy. So I'm going to work with longer thinner bits just to seal the gaps to start with. Just trying to get a smaller base plate part to reduce the footprint in the tank and that way water can flow underneath it. I'm also purposefully putting some of the epoxy down into the cracks so that when I squish it together it's bound to both pieces. Okay, so we ended up with seven structures in total, four are standalone-ish and one is, I've, I've based it around using three pieces all together to create a bit of a swim through and a rear spire. Uh, so I'm going to remove some water from the tank because there'll be some displacement from obviously putting these rock work, uh, this rock work in and then once I've done the displacement I'll start placing these uh, pieces in and we can have a look at the configuration within the tank but for now I'm pretty happy with what the way they've come out um, and what they look like but we won't really be able to tell until it's into the tank so let's do that here we go here's the first piece that's going into the tank bit of a t-piece lots of surface area on top not much of a footprint underneath pretty much perfect for what we're looking for Here we have the little spire, very slender piece this piece, quite tall. This piece has a very um, flat back, it's got a piece with a really sharp flat back so I'm going to face that towards the back so it's not as obvious and it might go in that back corner over to the side here. So like I said, I'm going to move a few things around guys, but I'll just get them in there for now. So far we haven't uh, displaced too much more than what I took out, so I'm pretty happy. It'll take a bit of playing around until I'm completely happy, but it's a start. And at least we've got some rock work in there that I can work some bacteria on top of. The next thing I want to show you is the rest of the equipment I've purchased to make this tank run a little bit easier. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, let's start with the first item on the list, which is my automatic top-up unit. I've got a Tunes Osmolator. I've always used these in the past. There are a few other options on the market, but this one I find is really, really reliable. So because it's never failed me in the past and automatic top-up is such an important component of the system, I made sure I purchased one that did the job really, really well and that I could trust. The next item that I got for the job to make this tank run better is the Guy 330 kit. Now this has a twin 
um, guys in the packet and what that will allow me to do is put one on the left side and one on the right side of the weir. The distance I've been allowed by the tank in those areas is nearly perfect for these guys to go in. So they'll uh, add a great component in the way of flow to the tank and allow me to dial in different flow types, different angles. I'll be able to uh, put one side at, at the bottom of the tank and one at the surface. So we've got good surface agitation, good removal of any detritus that may settle on the bottom of the tank. Lift that up, throw that down the weir so that the filter socks and everything else can pick that up in the future. So circulation, super important part of the tank. The return circulation will be good, but this will take it to the next level so that I can keep some SPS in the tank. Now, last but not least, I did mention this last time, my Dr. Tim's and my ammonium chloride. I'm going to pop these in today and get the cycle started. So I'll do some measurements later and we'll pop those in. We'll start by putting the guys in. Instructions. Controller, guy number one, and power for number one. So I'll just get the power run first of all. So power for the second. and second guy. These are accessories, so there's some spare parts in there. There's also some flow guides that uh, actually direct the flow, but I'm gonna leave them open face for now. So here we go, we'll pop the first one in on the right side here. And just as predicted, really, really good fit. I'll adjust these in the future too to suit, but for now we'll just get them in position and in the tank. And of course, one to the other side. Okay, so we're just gonna put the controller on. I will tidy up all these cables, but I'll probably leave that till next episode. I want to get a bit of furniture here that I mentioned in the earlier episodes that'll be able to contain all this and keep it nice and neat. All right, all connected. Now, the apex hasn't been set up yet, so I may have some channels on the board that are set to auto or off. I have to connect that to the apex to engage these particular outlets that aren't turned on. As you can see, there's no power on the display at the moment. That's just due to the places I plugged it in not being issued power yet. All right, now that we've got the guys all set up, we have to put our Osmolator on. So let's go through and do that now. Now I mentioned in the earlier episodes, this front top up area isn't actually going to be used for this top up unit. I'm going to have a reservoir set off to the side in the cabinetry that I'm getting in the future. That way I can have more volume. This one only holds about 10 litres, which isn't enough for me. I'm gonna have a lot of surface agitation, so there'll be a lot of evaporation. So I'm gonna make sure I've got a large enough receptacle that that's not gonna become an issue. But for now, I'll get this started and I'll just use a bucket off to the side. So we've got the, the pump itself. I've got the controller. This comes with adhesive double-sided tape. I'm not going to put that on just yet. I'll just let it sit within the cabinet, maybe in this spare dry area. Because I don't want to fix it to the inside of the cabinet and then move it at a later date. I prefer it all just be done where it needs to be done. We've got the tubing, We've got the little brace. This. Uh, this is so the water level isn't disturbed by surface movement so that the laser can get an accurate reading. 
This is to fix our tubing onto the side of the tank so it doesn't flail everywhere when it's sending water from the pump to the tank. Magnets. More magnets. And this will be our measuring array. And the measuring, oh sorry, power pack. The measuring array is part of the magnet kit here. And it is essentially a laser to be able to determine the water level height and then a float. And the float is for when the water level goes too high and it sounds an alarm to let you know that it's overflowing. Typical when you turn off your return pump, uh, the back siphon from a return line will raise the water level in the sump and send the alarm off. It's pretty standard fare. Uh, it's also obviously if the unit goes faulty, it's going to dump a bunch of RO water in there raising the level. So not only does it send an alarm, it actually turns the pump off too. So it's a nice uh, safety feature. So here's our, our little array um, magnets and the laser and the float gets put into this. So I'll install all of that now. Okay, so laser here, so water should only ever rise to here. And then if it goes past, the float will pop up and the alarm will sound and the pump will cut off. So it's important to put this in the correct position as well within the sump. And that is in the return chamber. Okay. So we've got the sensors in there, now for the pump. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to put the container off to the side just for now to use and the pump will go ahead and go into this bucket that I've got and I'll just put the, the um, controller on top of the bucket for now, probably on top of a towel or something so it doesn't get any splash or, or wet from anything, um, but that will work for now until I get a finalised setup for it. And now we attach it to a little brace. All right, that's in, all fixed up. Should be ready to use as an ATO. Okay, we're at the final stages of today's episode. So last but not least is the Dr. Tim's and the ammonium chloride. We've got all of our structures made for our aquascape. We've got our auto top up capability, so the fresh water's coming back in and we've got some flow in the way of the guys now. So it's ready to go. What I need to do is add in, to get to PPM ammonia, which is what you want to try and reduce from um, to get to your nitrite and then nitrate within the cycle is I want 2 ppm, and to get 2 ppm, I need to add 4 drops per gallon. Now this is 60, so I'll need a total of 240 drops from this bottle. Once I've got that in, I'm going to go ahead and add the one and only. Now I'm going to tip half up here. Not that I think this matters because of the circulation and per hour, the water will get through all of the media and whatnot down in the actual sump. I still want to add half up top onto the rock and half down onto the media. Just a bit of superstition. So let's go ahead and start adding the ammonium chloride. So 240, we're going to be here for a few drops. I think we've got one straight off the top of the bottle here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two hundred. So up to 240 to go. Okay, so that should get our water to a point of 2 ppm ammonia. Now it's time to add the Dr. Tim's. I believe we give it a good shake. Shake well before using. Make sure all the little bits from the bottom are up and circulated within the bottle. Let's go and add it in. This is the exciting part that I love in a tank, is getting it ready to actually hold living animals. And part of that is making sure you've got the correct bacteria in the tank to do so. So here we go. Top half, most of it's going over the weir anyway, it's a bit over there, and then the rest I'm going to throw down the bottom. Just filling up the tank water again, giving it a bit of a rinse inside the bottle to get the remainder out, and that's the lot. 
So essentially, if all calculations have been done correctly, I should be able to test ammonia shortly and see 2 ppm. And then within 24 to 48 hours, I should see a reduction of the ammonia to near zero, if not zero. And then I can add a little bit more ammonium chloride just to make sure that the bacteria population is large enough to then reduce it again. And then I should be right. We should be moving into the next stage looking at my nitrite levels. And then once the nitrites hit the bottom zero level, we're ready to start increasing those nitrates with the remaining bacteria that's in there that's converted at all and the nitrates will give me a good indication that the cycle's near finished. Um, and then it'll be time to put in some livestock. So that's it for the latest update on the cameraman's water box. I'll bring you future episodes with new livestock going in, the new fish going in, the final placement of the aquascape and things like that. Thank you very much for watching and we really enjoy having all the feedback in the comments, certainly the likes, subs. We can't thank you enough guys for watching the channel. We have a great time making it for you and we hope you're enjoying the content. If you could share it to all your friends, we would be greatly appreciative of this. So until next time, happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.